Trying to break into a new field or new job can be very, very scary and challenging. And I think the most scary part about it isn't necessarily like you might know what you need to learn, but the scariest part is that you don't know what you actually need to learn to land the first job. And it's not any easier with people telling you to do different things. Then you start scrambling from being a software engineer to a data analyst to a data engineer, and you are just so lost and you have no idea what you want to do going forward. So at this point through Analytics Collective, I've helped countless of people land data jobs and I've really just boiled it down to a science. It is a lot simpler if you just boil it down. So in this video, I'm gonna be going through the secrets that it takes to land your first job in data. If you're new here, my name's Rohan. I actually studied business and I ended up getting my first job in data at a startup and got laid off just four months later. But right after this, I landed my next job in business intelligence and data in two weeks after the layoff. After this, I ended up landing my dream role in tech as a data scientist. And finally, at this point, I do consulting on my own terms for e-commerce stores and startups. So in this video, I formulated a three-part formula to land your first job in data. While trying to switch careers or do something completely new, it gets very lonely. It's much easier to do something with a whole group of people around you or a tribe around you. So go ahead and join the Discord down below. I'm gonna link it. There are over 5,500 people in there all trying to break into data, doing group projects, referring to each other. It's honestly one of the best resources out there to land your first job. So the first step is identifying the job title and niche that you want to break into. Now, one of the most common misconceptions is that if you're trying to break into data from an unrelated field that you might have think your entire career or your entire education was a waste, but these are actually your unfair advantages. Data is just one part of the job. There comes domain knowledge, there's come soft skills. There's so many different components of lending your first job in data. And I don't want you to think whatever you've done previously or whatever you're doing now is a waste of time and effort. You have to understand that you have hidden advantages, whether you realize them or not, and you need to frame these as a story. At the end of the day, the person who gets the job is the person who has the best story and the person who is qualified to do the job. Not the person who's just the best SQL coder, the best Python coder. It's the person who has a great, great story that aligns with the position. So an example of this, if you were previously a nurse, you might have a really easy time breaking into healthcare data analytics, which is, by the way, a very, very fast growing field right now. So my advice is pick three different job titles, in, whether this is data analysis, business intelligence, data science, and then pick three different industries that you have an easy time breaking into that you have an advantage in. I would throw in one field that you're just genuinely interested in. So if you're very interested in music and production, maybe target like Hollywood or the media industry is one of the industries as well. So for me, one of my unfair advantages advantages was actually breaking into the e-commerce field because I actually ran an e-commerce store back in 2018. Another unfair advantage I had was finance because I actually worked in finance previously and I was able to actually break into Wall Street and business intelligence. And lastly, I was also just very interested in technology. I had no unfair advantage here. I was just interested. So I had two industries I was targeting that I had experience and had a story to tell. I had one that was kind of outside the bounds. And in my first role, it was actually at a startup. So I kind of played into the story. Like I ran a startup in the meantime. I ran the e-commerce store, which I considered a startup. And the startup was actually servicing in boot camps, educational boot camps, teaching people how to code. Funny enough, I've actually attended a boot camp myself and I have a very good experience. And this is how I was able to kind of play a story and craft a story to get my first role. Not to mention, I did a few other things that will begin into the video. Like I personalized my cover letter, I interviewed properly. Honestly, just made a really good impression going in. Okay, so the next step, once you identify three different niches and job titles, you need to start tracking your applications. This honestly just baffles me how many people don't track their applications. Look, you want to get a job in data, right? You need to be data-driven about your application tracker. You need to have an Excel sheet or Google sheet or whatever you want to use and track every single application you're sending in. Because let me tell you, it is so easy to kind of delude yourself and thinking, oh, I've applied to hundreds of roles, even though you might have applied to 20 on Sunday, zero on Monday, two on Tuesday, your brain kind of just makes you feel like you've applied to more than you have. And really the only way to hold yourself accountable is to just start tracking them and be like, oh, maybe I'm just not hitting the volume. Because the number one complaint I get from students trying to break in is like, I'm not able to land interviews. And then I say, are you tracking your applications? And they're like, no. And when it comes down to it, we actually check how many they're applying to, it's probably five to 10. Look, you're probably not gonna get a first round interview with five to 10 interviews. On average, I think a good number is around 30 to 50 applications to get one first round interview. These are the numbers that personally I've gotten for myself and my peers. These numbers could vary depending on your situation. So some metrics I want you to track is your first round interview rate, your second round interview rate, your third round interview rate, and your offer rate. So once you track all of these three things, you can then identify where you're actually struggling in the application process. I recommend focusing more on that first round interview rate when you're getting started and figuring out which one of these three industries do you have the best shot so we're going to be doing something called a split test. We want to apply the equal buckets of the three industries we identified earlier and figure out which one we actually get the best response rate in. So this is what we call analyzing patterns. And chances are, if you're trying to break into data, you've already done this in some of their projects already. And you can use Google Sheets or Excel to actually track this and even plot it out on a graph and be like week over week, where's the best response rate this week? Where's the best response rate this week? And honestly, it does depend on the timing of the year as well. Now, step three is a bit more contrarian. A lot of people probably don't recommend this, but I recommend this because I think you 
need to get practice interviewing. So I recommend doing an 80-20 split. So 80% need to be bulk applications. What I mean by bulk applications is things you are okay taking, but you're not very, very interested in. And 20% of your applications have to be highly personalized applications targeting your dream companies and your dream roles. So bulk applications should take you no longer than five to 10 minutes to fill out. They should be very simple. Stuff you just got on LinkedIn or Indeed that you don't really know very well. And you can create a really generalized resume for this. You can just use the simple data analyst resume based on that industry. You don't need to personalize the resume or cover letter at all. Just hit that apply button, get it done, and just get those reps in immediately. Now, the personalized applications, those are 20% of your applications, get a bit more tricky. You need to be tailoring your resume and cover letter for these roles. And I don't mean just pasting into ChatGPT and be like, output me a personalized resume or cover letter. You need to actually do it and write it yourself. You can use ChatGPT for ideas, but I don't want you to just copy and paste because a lot of companies are cracking down on it. It is so easy for me to see an application that someone used ChatGPT and someone who did not use ChatGPT. So try to actually write it yourself. Don't just rely on AI because people will see right through this. For your personal applications, I also recommend reaching out to people at that company or people in those roles and just trying to reach out to the hiring manager directly. This allows you to actually kind of bypass the interview system in a way and you can actually get through to recruiters faster. And also if you land the interview and you've actually reached out to people at the company, you can actually showcase that you've learned more about it. You put in some effort. Look, a lot of people just aren't putting in effort. If you just put in an extra five to 10 minutes in your application, your chances of getting an interview are five to 10x. They're much, much higher. You just put in a little bit more effort than the other competitors who are applying. So now you need to start funneling your efforts. You need to start going into conventions. You need to start going into networking spaces and meeting more people in this industry. And then try to understand why is this working the best? Why is e-commerce the best for my application? And then you can paint a story. Like for me, I've actually ran an e-commerce store. That might be why. And then I start telling my story and I start making my actual interview questions on the thing that actually stands out in the interview process. Because chances are, you don't want to give your whole life story in an interview. You just want to give relevant experience and relevant education. If I'm applying to just e-commerce stores, I would talk a lot about data-driven strategies I've used running my own e-commerce store because this is more pertinent to the role. So at this point, you should be landing interviews and they should just be flowing in. You just got to be enjoying the process. And now this is where the fun part starts. You need to start actually learning behavioral and technical interview prep. And behavioral is really easy. You just use the, something called a STAR framework, which is situation task, action, and result. And literally all of your answers for behavioral questions should be using this star format. And I don't want you to use random stories. I want you to use stories that actually relate to the role to some degree. So as I mentioned with the e-commerce example, I can maybe mention some stories where I had challenges running it and I use data-driven strategies to help increase revenue. So make sure it's actually relevant with the star stories you actually end up using. Now, when it comes to interview prep for technical interviews, you can use stuff like lead code, hacker ring to actually prepare for these. And I recommend doing 20 to 30 before even your first interview because you don't want to end up like me and being really confused and sucking in your first interview. Look, interview skills should not be the reason you do not end up with an offer. So just to recap the entire process, identify three different industries and job titles that actually interest you and stuff you have an unfair advantage in. Two, you need to start tracking your applications and figuring out which one is the best one of these industries for you. Three, make sure to divide up your application to 80% bulk and 20% very personalized application. Four, by this point, you should identify what actually works and you need to double down on what works. Five, focus on the behavioral and technical interview prep by just doing those reps and practicing. So anyways, thanks for getting this far in the video. Hope this helps and subscribe for more content.